Hey, it's Joe and Lisa with Joe Lee Farms. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to talk about five reasons why people might leave Ecuador. We're talking about expats who move here and suddenly decide to leave and go back to their home country. So um, we're going to give you these in no particular order of importance or greatness. Um, it's just our experiences from living here in Ecuador and from talking with other expats um, and, and personal friends of ours who've actually left the country, um, who lived here, some of them even before we came. Sure, yeah. So five reasons, and one that's particularly near and dear to our heart, is grandchildren. When we moved here, we didn't know we were going to have a grandchild. Children, grandchildren, family, all those that are close to you back in the States or wherever you come from, may or may not make the journey all the way to Ecuador. It's going to be really hard for, um, you know, to be separated from family, and it's hard for us. Um, we do make trips back home to Texas to, to see family, but it's usually short, and it's very expensive, quite frankly. It used to be uh, quite inexpensive for us to travel back to Texas, mm -hmm. but it's about five times the cost of what it used to be. In, yeah, uh, everything has gone up. So, uh, you know, post-pandemic everything's more expensive than it was before we got here. So there are some people, I think, that just um, feel a need to be there and be with family, and we totally understand that. And, um, you know, if your family's unable to come here for visits, that makes it even harder. So, um, yeah, we, we get that one. Definitely, we get that one. So number two. Financial resources. People come thinking... Um, it's inexpensive, which it is. It's inexpensive to live here, much less than we had in the U.S., but they don't really budget their money to sustain them through their time here. We, you know, we really tell people that unless you have some sort of income stream of at least $1,000 a month, you probably shouldn't consider moving to Ecuador um, because things come up. Um, you're going to want to travel, possibly, and uh, you want to, you know, live a happy lifestyle, it's going to take some extra money at times to, uh, to make it here. Yeah. And I think people come here somewhat ill-prepared or they lose their money somehow. Or they invest in different things that uh, just don't pay off for them. And then they find themselves without enough money or their Social Security is not enough for them to live the kind of lifestyle they want to live. And so some of them are forced to return back to their home countries uh, to live with relatives, to, you know, try to get gain employment, et cetera. So that does happen. It does. So if you come and you have your nest egg, secure your nest egg and make sure you're, you budget for your time here. Yes, and we, we will talk about banking and things more in other videos, but, you know, having some CDs and some different uh, uh, income streams, some different avenues to help uh, give you that, that monthly figure that you need to get by. And um, so, yeah, you know, make sure you've got a plan, you stick with that plan, guard your little nest egg the best that you can. Okay, number three. This one is interesting because some people move to a dif different country or different location thinking it's gonna help their marriage or their relationship with their significant other. Yeah, if you've got marriage problems before coming to Ecuador, Ecuador is not going to make them better. It's probably going to make it worse. People say one of the major causes of divorce in the United States is building a new house together. Um, well, moving to Ecuador is twice as bad because there's a lot of pressure when you first move. It's a new country. Um, you feel a little out of sorts, out of place. Um, you're worried about visas, trying to make all of these things happen. So it can cause a lot of stress in the marriage um, mm -hmm. and certainly running out of financial resources uh, is going to cause stress. Yeah, building a new lifestyle is similar to building a new house. I mean, you've got all the same obstacles, financial obstacles, uh, fitting into the culture, trying to uh, make new friends. Uh, there's just all sorts of things there. So, yeah, if you don't have a good, strong marriage before you come, the journey may not make it any stronger. And I think people who aren't used to being around each other day in and day out, 
um, and then all of a sudden retire and move here and you're forced to be in each other's presence all day long, that could be a challenge for some people. And could be. Lisa and I have always worked together and beside each other so much that it wasn't a challenge for us, I don't think. It wasn't a challenge for you, was it? No, no. no. Yeah, so we have had friends here get divorced and, you know, one or the other or both move back to home country. Um, we've had people we know who are single people move here and marry uh, someone local um, and that not work out and lose all their money that way. Um, yeah, you really have to understand the culture and the differences between who you are and where you came from versus um, a new person you may be dating from a different country their cultural differences may be more than a relationship can handle. That's exactly right. Okay, number four. Health, health care. We got great health care here in Ecuador, but um, there's someone we know in the last year that uh, came down with cancer. And so um, they're from Canada. So they can get the free health care back in Canada uh, so they went home to Canada basically to die. And um, so it was more affordable and they wanted to be around their family members in the final days. Um, so sometimes health can drive that and, and um, certainly we understand that. Um, for us, we, we understand it's cheaper dying here in Ecuador than anywhere else for us. Definitely. Yeah, things like, you know, you can be uh, cremated for $1,000. So. Um, you know, it, that's a lot cheaper than the U.S. And and it's just a little easier for us, I think, if, if we became terribly ill to live out our final days here um, rather than travel all the way back and burden our family with all of that. Well, and that's what it is, is, is do, you, do you go ahead and finish up life here or do you um, go back to be with family or to add burden to family or... Um, you know, it just depends on your circumstances as to where you want to be. Uh, the health care overall, as we've said in previous videos, is really good here. Um, yeah. But you got to find just anywhere in the world, you have to find the right doctor, the one that you trust, the one that you like. And uh, that way you can have confidence in them. We've been very blessed to have found really good doctors here in um, the Loja area and in Cuenca and... Um, and here in Vilcabamba even. Even here in Vilcabamba. And I would say in, in a couple of the cases, the the overall experience was better than we experienced in the U.S. Yeah, and I think, you know, uh, to sum that up, you, no matter where you live, you need to be your own healthcare advocate and um, understand what kind of... Um, um, things are being done to you, what kind of medicines are being prescribed, and be sure you understand it's your body, you need to take care of it, yeah. Yeah, you own your health, and that's one of the things, one of the reasons we appreciated moving here is the, the medical industry does not own your health. You own your health, and you have to do your own research, and you have to do your due diligence, and you need to make changes in your lifestyle to make your health where you want it to be. They actually here, they, they hand you your x-rays. You keep all of that. They hand you your lab work. That's all yours. You can choose to share it with the doctor. Yeah. Um, but that all belongs to you. You take that home and you keep that yourself. Okay, reason number five. This one's a big one. I mean, it's got so many facets to me. It's, it's big, but it is the adventure of a lifestyle change. Yeah, I think that's a big one for a lot of folks. Um, they come here, they can't get used to the cultural differences. They don't really immerse themselves in the culture, which right. we think is very, very important. If, if you can't uh, immerse yourself in the culture here and get to know the culture and get to know the Ecuadorian people, you're probably not gonna make it here. Um, if you want to live the same lifestyle that you lived back in your home country, you're probably not going to make it here. There's there's so many things that are different. And we've mentioned in other videos, when you go to Aloha to shop here, and you know you may not find everything on the first trip. Um, no, you may not. There's not a Home Depot on every corner like there is in the U.S. And no. there's not a 
different grocery stores on every corner. We have little tiendas on every corner. But it's it's what you choose to make of it. Um, if if you have a little bit more of an adventurous spirit, there's not a big box store to go to. So you don't get to go to one place, but that gives you an opportunity to walk all over Aloha and go and visit all these neat little tiendas. And some of them, some of the hardware stores, I swear, they're, they're as big as what a 10 by 10 room and probably have as much um, variety as you would find in a Home Depot store. Yeah, they really know how to make use of their floor space. Every single floor Every space, inch. wall space, ceiling space, it's amazing. They stack it on the sidewalk out front. And um, so, yeah, you may get here, and I've mentioned this before too, you don't get your favorite spice or, um, you know, you want to ship stuff in on Amazon, and that's certainly doable. Um, but I think at some point you have to decide whether or not you're going to live more like an Ecuadorian and mm -hmm. use the things that are available here. Um, now, you know, we're guilty. We just brought back stuff from us for us from our trip to Texas and you know, we, we have our suitcases full. But if you're going to make that trip, you should stock up on whatever it is that you want. Our suitcases were full, but we did not meet the weight limit. We were no. well under. Well so under, yeah. We did way better than we did the first couple of times. Yeah. But like we've said before, go and do what you have to do to get through and then find as much as you can here and support the local economy here. Yeah, you know, and if you are in the habit of going to the movie theater, you know, once a week, um, you might need to find something else to do. Um, yeah. There is a movie theater in Loja that plays Spanish movies. And then on request, if you can guarantee them 100 people, then they will bring in an English movie. And we do that from time to time. A gentleman here in town yeah. usually schedules that and coordinates that. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's a special event here for us to do that. Now, in Cuenca and some of these other cities, um, I imagine they have bigger movie theaters with more English movies. Sure. But that's what we deal with here in the Loja province. So um, there are people here who set up movie screens in their backyards and have movie night on like Saturday. And, you know, everyone comes to their house and participates in movie night. So that's a real social gathering. It's a real, you know, really neat thing to do. But if you're not willing to accept these differences and the, the lifestyle change, you're not going to make it. Yeah, it, it's definitely an adventure. And you can either choose to enjoy it or you can choose to not enjoy it. Um, but the choice is yours. Yeah, embrace the adventure, embrace the change. And I mean, the more you do that, the happier you're going to be. And um, you actually get excited about the new things that uh, come rolling into your lives. And I think, you know, our list is, is not completely comprehensive. There may be some other reasons why people leave. Um, and I'm sure if you want to leave one in the comments, please do. Um, I'm sure that, you know, everyone sees it a little differently, but these are the common things that we see, these five yeah. things, and the things that many of our friends here tell us about and they have seen and, um, and what we've witnessed too. So, yeah, I think those are five reasons why people tend to leave. And um, Five big ones. Yeah, five good ones, the major ones, I would mm -hmm. say. No particular order. No. So we hope you enjoy this video. We hope you'll give us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe. And please leave us comments. We love your comments. Thank you all so much. We've reached over 30,000 views. We're, we're growing and it's all because of wonderful people like you. Yes. See you next time. Ciao for now.